Um, I can't help but suspect in game two, both of these players might be switching off depending on how game one goes. Starting off on PS2, a fantastic stage for both Wolf and Banjo. Wolf is able to maneuver around the platforms, while Banjo is just able to get so much setup going with the grenade. And Stockseeker getting a lot of mileage off of forwarder and up air, already racking up 37%. Stock is not going to have any issue with racking up damage when it comes to what he plays with Wolf. It's definitely, like, doesn't matter if he gets a lot of hits, and each hit just deals a decent amount. And he's keeping a really good zone against, right? He's only just now getting in there, trying to tie up some of his percentage. He's getting the multi-jab punishing. I believe that was a cross-up dash attack on his shield. Well, right now, um... I really, really just like love the way that Utopian Hui is throwing out his grenades because it's just like forcing the stocks they could maneuver around them in such a particular way. And if he doesn't, he's going to pick them up and throw them right back at him. Yeah, no, it's a really good arc because it's denying both the base plat in front of the hovering platforms as well as the platforms themselves. Ray's able to do that retreating and he still has enough speed to grab them and use them aggressively if he wants. Getting a multi job off right now. Stock Taker still not entirely oh. off stage, but leading the dash in with the up smash. A beautiful, just like, commitment from Utopian Ray. Worked out for him brilliantly. Right now, Stock Taker is trying to lead a uh, jump out of shield with the. Um, this is so dangerous. Oh, for right, went for all right the marbles now. there. All right, he should be fine. No, actually. We couldn't see it on our end oh. because of the player camera, but I heard that egg pop. Ray was ready to recover just a little too far for it to happen, and now Stock is running away wow. with a little bit of a lead that he's been giving. And Ray is effectively able to reset the pressure being imposed on him with that really beautiful use of the Wonder Wing. Right now, Stock Taker getting a foil into the throne like a betrayal grenade. That was really, really good stuff from Stock. I love that. Yeah, one of the, uh, I would say one of the slowest developments in Stock's play as he's really been, like, taking to rise as one of the dominant forces of uh, New York has been his item play. He's never been particularly strong with it, but I think his small stint of playing with Banjo has at least given him a good idea of what to do when denying that tool to the character. So it's nice to see little bits of it here. And nice empty hop. Let's reset the situation. Okay, really, really great tech side. chase because by jumping up like that, he was effectively making sure that he's not going to be getting hit with a get-up attack. But also by drifting backwards, just every so slightly enough, he was able to cover every single tech option. So I love, love that way that Stock Taker was able to get the tech chase, but getting the down smash on the neutral get-up. Wow. Don't and Utopian Ray just like threw his entire lead. He threw all of his momentum by like wonder winging off the stage. Yeah, it's um, a shame to see it. The switch to uh, FD. I feel like this is going to bring back Banjo. Yeah, it's the pick into Banjo. And both of these players are want to actually stick with their characters. And I feel like that's a good choice considering Utopian Ray did really, really well until he dropped his momentum. And then Stock Taker, once he did secure his footing, he was able to run away with it. But Utopian Ray trying to get something started off of the up throw, but getting the down throw into up air, backing up a very, very decent 29%. Now, all that's going to get answered in a couple of aerials. So I like the idea of Utopian Ray staying like right on top of Stock, but still at like a safe enough distance. It's like right outside of that hot zone. And right now, both of these players are actually taking this really, really slowly going with really non-committal approaches. Both of them trying to maybe lead a jump and like I see you talking about doing the up airs in place, but Stock Ticker actually able to get the forward and forward and first, resetting all the stage control he wants for himself, unable to connect the two frame down smash though. Stock's use of Blaster has been fantastic in this set because he's not only getting in little bits of chip damage here and there on Ray, but he's managed a complete denial of uh, activity from the grenade. Yep. Getting the dash attack and trying to maybe catch a landing with the grenade, but Stock Taker opting to go a little bit higher first. And I really, really also just want to make a note of how Utopian Ray is mixing up his recoveries because it's at this point it's like a 50-50 of is he going to snap to ledge or is he going to go above ledge and throw out a grenade and effectively punish Wolf with whatever ledge guard option he's trying to throw out. Um, almost getting the grenade into a hole, yeah. but Stop Taker is still able to clean up the very first stop of the game with a back hit. Alright. 
All right, Ray managed to catch Stock right in that window where he can get upsell out of the berry. Didn't matter how well he was mashing, he was not getting out of that one. Doesn't really reliable. It's like having a kill field. But he told me to be dipping a little bit too low, still conserving his other jump. Very, very good on his part. No, Ray taking to these uh, more defensive positionings with his back turn to Stock has been fantastic yep. decision making on his part. Because right there, we saw him utilize uh, the egg a couple of times. Just as, almost like a snake grenade would, get him out of harm's way immediately. Ooh, and Stocktaker trying to mix up his recovery with the aggressive up. You right on to your Topin Ray, but your Topin Ray was ready with his shield, making sure he wasn't going to be hit with anything of the like. Um, and right now, Stocktaker is going to try to get a back here, perhaps an F smash. The F smash, not enough to take it quite yet. All right, couple of jabs rocking in. Just that little bit of damage. The Wonder Wing, you know, even though it's typically known for being such a strong mover, like a good mix up and recovery, it's just hurt right every time he's been forced to use it. And now, not able to secure that kill as well. I'm surprised Ray right? didn't opt to uh, go a little deep for right in Wolf while he was like, out there. Yep. And even though Wolf's side is a really, really potent hitbox, it does not have a lot of priority. Stop Taker right now sitting at 100% lead with 120, 124% and a stock lead. Uh, but Utopian Ray is able to bring it all the way back to even with the falling forward out. And like, the momentum in this set is like completely different than it was in game one. Um, I just like feel like both of these players are taking their respective turns of like edge guarding one another really, really patiently and then closing out their stocks with a beautifully placed aerial. Stock Taker is able to punish the Wonder Wing with the dash attack and get all of the stage control for himself. Yeah, now compared to game one where Stock completely just smothered Ray, this is much more back and forth, and I feel like that's because Stock does not have a lot of landing options here. And every time that Ray gets a chance to play the game again, all Stock is doing is running back, utilizing Blaster to eliminate the egg or force another reaction out of Ray. But yep. it's he's really limited in his options. I know this is really, really scary. A fantastic grenade into the RP. <gasps> but Topian Ray, I'm like... <laughs> he's <laughs> only got one left. And he has to make sure he's really, really careful with it. Fantastic recovery there. Making sure he can get back really, really deep by grabbing his grenade preemptively. Oh, and the one was used when it mattered. All right. Like that, we're coming into game three. The way that Banjo, oh my god, Banjo like just feel momentum just feels like really periodic in the sense that Banjo will like rack up percentage and then it like completely stop for the moment. And so it just like gives me like a little bit of whiplash, <laughs> almost like when he's like getting the grenade into one new grenade into forty there. But that's like forty percent right there, right? Yeah. But then for the rest of the set, he's playing it really, really slowly with his neutral beat. Um, oh, all right. The huh. victory in Final Destination has matched the Force of Character switch from Stock, and it's going into a signature Villager. Yep. And I feel like two, Villager pocketing the grenade too will be really, go. really big and fantastic for Stock Taker. Yeah, but Pocket in general is a very good tool in this matchup because you can use it often, and it all has very good effect. Pocketing the rear egg will take away its uh, ability to get spawned again. It's one of those oh. items where it just gets denied. And even though Neutral B can spawn more eggs, it's a very quick hit confirm that Villager is able to make good use of it at mid to high percentages. Oh, and I love that. Like, the way he's just able to set up on ledge, effectively covering all of these options at once with the dash back back out. So really, really good stuff from Stock Ticker there. And right now, he's using the side B to just basically push Ray away, saying you're not going to be able to ledge at ledge trap me at all. I'm going to force you to go back a little bit. And the side B coming in clutch once again, just breaking him out of the last hit of the back end. I like the pick of the Villager on Town and City because it's a lot of space, which, while that does give Ray a lot of options with Banjo, Villager has the tools to be able to yep. deny a lot of that all at once, all the while giving Stock a good amount of space to uh, survive if need be. Like, look at this kind of pressure. You've got the tree in the way to prevent Wonder uh, Wing. You've got the hail that is the forward air and back air. And with Ray running out of Wonder Wings, all of a sudden he's going to have to worry a lot about Bowling Ball because Bowling Ball completely denies Shock Pad's uh, mix-ups when it yep. comes to recovery. 
it honestly just denies any character that has really, really linear vertical recoveries and once Wonder Wing is out of play, but <laughs> able to get the stage spike with the uh, with the Lloyd there. Really beautiful stuff. And that is going to be a multi jab out of shield, surprisingly falling out of it. I'd have expected Stock Ticker to up to maybe a grab into down throw or something of the sort. But regardless, I love the fact that Stock Ticker is just holding on to the grenade. The up tilt, maybe Villager was a little too tiny. Not only is Villager a little bit too small, but also uh, Stock Taker delayed his mesh out of the berry just a little bit, and it managed to throw off the timing. Yeah. Also, Dar, one thing real quick I want to bring up, because we were just talking about Banjo's ability or inability thereof to recover. Stock still has the egg in his pocket. Yep. So that is an option completely denied to Ray. So oh. he has so few options when it comes to recovery. It's either you wonder wing to ledge, and once that is out, um, you can only up it because you can't hurt yourself with a down B anymore. So that was really, really great play from Stock Ticker, and you're going to maybe actually see that from Utopian Ray, not even wanting to risk it throwing out in a neutral anymore. Maybe he's only going to be throwing out the grenade when he just needs it, like absolutely needs it to recover. Um, Oh, Stock Ticker with one balloon, but still able to get back onto stage. I don't think Stock Ticker was confident enough that his multi jab was connected, thus, he dropped it preemptively. I really like the awareness with him there. Um, and also, what I really just like want to make note of right now is that by pop, like a little bit of a change, I think that was made to uh, Villager a couple of patches ago, is that Villager no longer needs to recycle items. Um, because I believe before. Uh, oh, yeah, you used to have to take it out of your pocket and put it back in in order to reset a timer. Mm -hmm. But Ultimate has given us the gift of an infinite pocket, essentially. Oh, that was a change from Floyd to Ultimate. Okay, my goodness. That was, that was a bit of my mistake. But right now, Ray is out of Wonder Wings, but he's also out of his stack in stock. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what Ray needs to... This looks really, really tough. Yeah, it's, it's the matter of using a character who, while... Banjo can be considered a zoner by nature of a lot of his uh, moves. Not just being projectiles, but also being able to just deny space and trap landings well. Uh, he, it's it's hard to work against a character who's one of the premier zoning characters. I would feel out of uh, out of uh, ultimate, like especially when it comes to like the projectile versus projectile matchup, denying certain tools from characters can shut down options for the character, but also the player themselves. Like, we've already seen how well adept uh, Utopian Ray is at utilizing the grenade for aggressive pressure or mix-ups on recovery. Wow. But if he doesn't have that, look how badly it slowed him down at the beginning of this match and how much momentum stock takers managed to assert, despite playing a relatively passive character. And Banjo's like the kind of a character that necessarily doesn't like, is it maybe the most comfortable in going in? And I love that from Stock Taker because he was able to extend the hitbox using the tree. Not only did he slow it down, he was also able to react to it a lot better. You have a huge audio cue, you have a huge visual cue, and then he was able to get the axe punish. So that was, I think, right now, all of that play, that was brilliant on Stock Taker's part. I love his use of the tree for the final stock.